Hello, Pro Tools MIDI. Very underrated, at least in my opinion. I think uh, a lot of people are not aware of how powerful the MIDI in Pro Tools really is. So hopefully this will um, enlighten some of you and allow you to take advantage of some of the really cool MIDI functionality in Pro Tools. We're gonna go over a bunch of stuff, probably over a few different videos, but um, we're gonna get into, uh, of course, MIDI control section at the top of the edit window. Uh, MIDI real-time properties, uh, another underrated function of Pro Tools. We're also gonna get into the MIDI editor, right? A separate floating window for editing MIDI tracks or instrument tracks. We also have the score editor. We'll get into that and a bunch of other cool functions and features of Pro Tools MIDI. Stay tuned. If you know anything about Pro Tools, you're probably uh, familiar with its ability to record audio, edit audio, mix audio. It does all those things really well. Um, a lot of people aren't aware of the MIDI functionality in Pro Tools that's been in there since basically Pro Tools 8. Let me just start with a click track. Go to the track menu at the bottom of the track menu, create click. And that will create an aux track with the click plugin on there. And I have currently the MIDI controls section visible at the top of the edit window. If you don't see that on your screen, go to the upper right corner of your Pro Tools edit window, click on the edit window view selector and make sure MIDI controls is selected. This allows you to do a few things. Number one, turn the metronome on and off. And I do that with a shortcut on my full size QWERTY keyboard with a numeric keypad section. Number seven on the uh, numeric keypad will turn the, the MIDI click on and off. That's really handy. I'm gonna turn it on and start playback. And of course, also in this same section, I can change the tempo of the session. So it defaults to 120, I've got it set to 100 beats per minute. I can set the meter for four time, whatever I want to. Um, so that's the MIDI controls. I usually leave those uh, visible so that I can see what's going on there. I can also find out what the tempo of a track is. So if I wanna calculate a tempo, I can just click in the tempo field there so that it's highlighted green like that and then tap the T key on my keyboard in time with the song that I'm listening to and it will calculate the tempo based on the the rhythm of the T key that I'm hitting there so I just typed uh, tapped out 105 but this is good for um, calculating a, a tempo a lot of people don't know about that there you go I'm gonna go back to 100 so I've got my click track enabled it's it's an aux track which allows you to route it anywhere that you'd like to um, this is great for sessions that you've got, you know, uh, live musicians. Maybe you want to send the click track to the drummer in a discrete headphone mix, but not to the vocalist, or you can send the click wherever you want to. So it gives you full routing functionality because it's a, a track like everything else in, in a Pro Tools session. There are two types of MIDI tracks. So I'm going to go to track menu, create new and I will create a MIDI track pretty straight ahead here. This allows you to record, edit, and play back MIDI information. Um, I don't use MIDI tracks anymore. I typically use instrument tracks, which is a combination of a MIDI track and an aux track. And I'll create a stereo instrument track here. And this is really handy because it does a couple of things. It also records allows you to edit and play back MIDI information, but you can put a virtual instrument. And Pro Tools comes with six virtual instruments, and of course there's literally hundreds of other virtual instruments that you can purchase and add into Pro Tools for whatever sound you could possibly um, imagine. But with every Pro Tools system, you get a, a, a collection of these really cool virtual, virtual instruments. I'll show them here. Um, this is uh, some of them right here. Here's Expand. This is a great plugin for sound uh, for songwriting because it's got I don't know 1,500 different sounds. It's got drums, pianos, keyboards, guitars, percussion, basses, synths, 
all kinds of different things that are really uh, useful for songwriting. You've got an idea for a song, you can usually find it pr here pretty quickly. And, and pull it up. And again, this is with every Pro Tools system. Uh, so that's Expand. Uh, DB33. There's the B3, uh, the uh, Leslie. And then Boom is a drum machine. And this plugin, as all plugins do, follow the tempo of the session. So if I change the tempo up here, I'll go up to one, I don't know, 130, just to make it very obvious. So anything that you do that's loop or rhythmic related will follow the tempo of the session. Mini Grand Piano, this is a great plugin. And Vacuum, another cool one. All of these are stock plugins that come. It's an analog ish synthesizer. Structure. This is a sample playback, and there's literally thousands of sounds that are available, many of them free online, but with the plugin, you get about a gig and a half. But this supports several different formats that you can import and use as sounds in structure. Okay, so how do you use an instrument track? It's really easy, actually. I'm gonna go into Pro Tools track menu, choose new, and most often you're gonna be creating a stereo instrument track, but it is possible to create a mono instrument track as well. However, some virtual instrument plugins are don't have a mono version, they're stereo only, just so you know. All right, so here's my stereo instrument track. I have a click track in my session, and I'm just gonna pull up one of the stock um, Avid uh, plugins, DB33, and there it is. I'm gonna name this track B3 Oregon, if I can type, and record enable it. And I'm using my, my MIDI controller. I also have, inside Pro Tools now, the, um, where is it, MIDI keyboard, which is quite handy. I can use my QWERTY keyboard as a MIDI controller. And I'm just hitting these letters on my QWERTY keyboard. And when I say QWERTY keyboard, I mean this one. You know what a QWERTY keyboard is. A, C, S, D, F, G. So those are um, MIDI notes, right? And then uh, Z and X will allow me to take this short range of keys down an octave or up an octave if I want to. Um, so it's really handy. And then of course C and V keys are my velocity. I can take the velocity of the notes because the letter, the, the, the keys on your QWERTY keyboard are not uh, velocity sensitive. So you hit the key, you get a, a, a static velocity. But anyway, so MIDI keyboard is handy in there. All right, so um, I've created my instrument track and you'll notice in the IO section, there is no input for this track because the plugin itself is the sound source. So no input is a valid option for the input of the track. The output of the track, I wanna hear it through my speakers. So of course I'm, I've assigned it to output one and two. But I'm gonna bring up another view here that's kind of important for instrument tracks and that is the instrument column. And this is where you assign the MIDI input and the MIDI output for this particular instrument track. And you'll notice it's assigned already. By default, when I assign my virtual instrument plugin, the DB33, it automatically, a Pro Tools automatically assigns the MIDI output to that plugin, right, that I just put in on this track. So the MIDI input is all, and that means any MIDI controller that you have connected to your system. In this case, I've got this small Arturia. I may have another MIDI keyboard. I may have a you know an MPC drum machine. All of those devices are valid MIDI input uh, sources when my MIDI input is set to all. I could limit it to just my Arturia keyboard if I wanted to, all channels, and that way this instrument track will only take MIDI data from my Arturia 
instrument uh, or MIDI controller as opposed to any others that I might have connected. Now in the MIDI output, I only have one MIDI output available because it's the only MIDI device, the B3 organ, that I currently have in the session. If I were to create another instrument track, I'll do that and put a, um, I don't know, I'll put expand on there. Multi-channel native, instrument, expand. Now you'll see that there is not only the DB33, but also the expand uh, is available as a output, but it already assigned it automatically to the new track that I created when I put that expand plugin on there. So the instrument column deals with the MIDI input that's going to be recorded onto the track. The MIDI output is dealing with where is this MIDI information going? Where am I sending it to? In these two examples, I'm sending it to virtual instruments inside the session, the B3 organ and the expand plugin. But these MIDI devices could be external that you have in your studio as well. So maybe you've got a, a physical MIDI keyboard that has sounds in it. You want to send MIDI to that device. You can do that as well. Um, also, uh, you know, rack mount modules, uh, MIDI sound source rack mount modules, you can assign the MIDI output to those devices if you've got them on your system, connected to your system and, and configured in the um, audio MIDI setup for a Mac. All right, so instrument column deals with the MIDI input and the MIDI output. The IO column deals with the audio input and the audio output. No input is a valid option uh, on the input side because the plugin itself is the sound source. And then the output is where the audio that is coming from these plugins is being routed, in this case, to my two speakers, but it could be part of a submix. However you want to route your virtual instruments, you can take advantage of all the Pro Tools routing uh, of the audio output of those plugins through the I.O. output tab. Stay tuned for more MIDI coming up on Pro Tools Services' YouTube channel. So subscribe now and stay in touch with all these Pro Tools tips and tricks and tutorials. Thanks.